Hello and welcome back to another Civ6 video. I am doing a tutorial on the September update of the World Builder and I'm going to be answering some of your questions. So this is sort of a two part video. The first part, I'll be sort of doing a walkthrough of World Builder and how to use all of its features, or at least most of them. And then in the second part, I'm going to be doing a Q&A where I'm going to be answering questions that I've got on some of my other videos, at least the ones I know the answers to. So let's get started. First things first, before we even begin to go into World Builder, you're going to want to go to Additional Content and go to Mods. Here's the thing, if you have any DLC or any mods, any maps that you've previously made, if any of it is enabled, other people will not be able to play your maps unless those are also enabled. That means if you have the, for example, DLC Nubia Civilization Pack, and you make a map and it happens to be enabled, and then you share it with your friend, if they don't have this exact DLC, they will not be able to play. So, you're going to want to click Disable All. Okay, unless you unless you know your friends have them. Let's say you know your friends have Rise and Fall and Gathering Storm. You can enable both of those. And then you are able to make your map and they'll be able to play on them as long as they have both of those. But if they don't, make sure you do Disable All. I, am, I do believe that if you do Disable All and you make a map, other people with the DLC will still be able to play. I'm not 100%. That's one I'm still testing out because uh, there's a couple different ways to test that. So, anyway, you head on back. World Builder now has its own little spot right here. If for some reason you can't see it here, then my guess is you have an older version of the game and you need to update. Again, this is uh, version 1.00341, if that means anything to you. I haven't played this game since I last made a video on it, which was like June, so it's been a while. But we're going to go to New Map. Uh, if you wanted, you could go to Load Map and you'd be able to choose one of your previously made maps. Or you could go to import map from map editor. Now warning, this is not officially supported and can cause issues, but there are other uh, map editors out there that you could use on the computer instead of having to enter the game. But we're going to enter the game. We're going to choose rule set. It's on standard rules because I have all the others disabled. Again, if you make a map on standard rules, you should be able to play it on standard rules, rise and fall, or gathering storm. But if you make it on gathering storm rules or rise and fall, only those ones will be able to play, if that makes sense. It's kind of like a rectangle is a square, right? Or no, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is a square. There we go. Anyway, you're going to choose which type of map you want. Um, you can do all maps. You can do official maps, world builder maps. Uh, I just do all maps. I do empty one every time just because it's easier to make maps with that. Choose map size. It will have to be whatever size you choose. So do keep in mind that you can't make a tiny one and be like, oh, actually, I want like a large version. It doesn't scale like that. You have to choose. I'm going to do dual because it's the easiest to make. Uh, and then you can go into advanced settings. There are resources. You should just do standard. Uh, I don't know what will happen if you choose random. I believe that means every time you play, it'll be random resources, not the ones you place. And again, Starting positions should be standard. You could do balanced. I think that would be all right. But if you do specific starting locations, it might mess things up. And then finally, world wrap. This is for if you want to make it so you can sail from one end of the map to the other. Right? It wraps around. If you don't do that, then it's kind of like you're playing on a square. Like the earth is flat versus is the earth uh, cylindrical. Which it is and it's a sphere, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, we click generate. Okay, once you're in the game, hopefully your HUD looks like this. If it doesn't look like this, that means you're either on a newer version of the game or an older version of the game, because they are making updates occasionally here and there. Uh, I believe the last time I played was in June, and they released this update in September. Uh, but if I zoom out, I can see the edges of the map. Obviously, if I go left or right, it'll just keep going, because we did world wrap. I like to kind of start just nice in the center. Over here on the right, it'll automatically start you with all the different terrain types. So you've got grassland, and that is grassland hills, mountains, or just flat. Then you've got plains of the three different kinds, desert of the three different kinds, tundra, snow, and then coast and ocean. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be making just sort of a blobby landmass, not going to be too worried about it. But I will make something a little bit unique, just so that way it's easier for me to make sure that it works. This is what I like to do sometimes when I am testing to make sure something works or not. So I'll just do sort of random stripes of different terrain types. And then, you know what, let's come in here, and we're going to do 
a medium brush, and we're going to do some, like, uh, some hilly sort of this stuff, just so we can connect some of these land masses. I don't really know. We're sort of making stuff. This isn't meant to be played on. This is just meant to be tested on. This is a great map. Wow. Look at this. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You can also undo or redo. Now, if you do that, it'll do... As you see here, it'll do whatever brush stroke you did, not individual squares, thankfully. It used to be like that. Um, so I'll keep that there, sure. Then, up here in the left-hand corner, you will see a couple different icons. Uh, we're going to be using these icons to do different things. They're also on different hotkeys if you want to be a little bit more fast like that. So terrain is the first one, the mountain symbol. We already used that. That's what we just did. Features. Features are what sit on top of your... Uh, on top of your terrain, if you want to think of it that way. They are, thankfully, since the last update, they actually took one of my suggestions. I, I am sure they watched my video specifically and did it. I totally didn't just think it was a good idea on their own. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, but these are things like woods, these are things like rainforests, right? And you'll notice that your, your um, hex will turn different colors. So if it's green, that means you can place it. If it's red, that means you can't place it. So you cannot place rainforest in the desert. Shame, I know. Uh, you can place an oasis in the desert, but it can't be on mountains. It has to be on, or hills. It has to be on flat, right? So you can kind of see there are different parameters for different things. Uh, there's also ice, of course. That has to be in the ocean. So you can, you can kind of see each of them has their own parameter. You can also do, again, the different brush sizes. So if I go a rainforest, oh no. Sorry, you cannot do that with this. But that's fine, because you usually want to be a little bit more fine-tuned with it. So I'm not really too worried about making this map look good, so I'll just add a couple bits of rainforest here and there. We'll add some more ice, blah, blah, blah. Again, this is just a practice map. Wonders are the next thing to take in mind. So wonders are pretty nice. They will tell you, they don't tell you directly what they need, but if you hover over things, it will tell you if that's an acceptable spot. So for example, the Dead Sea, usually, there we go, it can go in the desert. Um, whereas if I take something like, where is it? Where is my Mount Everest, right? I can't just place, place Mount Everest wherever. I need to go back to terrain I need to go put some mountains, right? So there's some mountains. Actually, sorry, I think I need grassland mountains for Mount Everest. Then I go back to Wonders, I go to Mount Everest, and I should be able to, there, oh, there it is, select it. If I want to get rid of it, I can right-click and get rid of it. Up here in the top right, you'll also be able to see what your most recent thing was. So you can see Mount Everest placement successful. So that tells me, yes, I did indeed place it. There are a few of them last time I played that don't always show accurately. I'm sure they're fixed now, but if they're not, that's probably why. Next one is Continent. Now, this is one I had been asking for for a long time, and I'm so happy they did it. So it used to be when you would paint, right? Let's say I want to make America. Uh, that's Antarctica. Let's say I want to make America, right? What used to happen is I would paint America, and you wouldn't be able to see any of the others you painted, so you had to guess. But now let's say I want to make this, all of this here, and it doesn't do ocean, of course. Let's say I want to make all this strip here. This is America. And then now I can come over here, I can switch to Antarctica, but look, I can still see where America is. It's so nice. So now I can go over here and make this Antarctica. And then I can go over uh, here, and there's a lot of options. We're going to do Calaria. I think that's how you pronounce that. We're going to go through and make this Calaria. Boom. So these are kind of cool. Uh, I like to usually do, like, different letters and things, kind of make them all different. That's the exact same color. That's not very helpful, but that's okay. Uh, Pangea will be the name of the bridge areas for me. And I'm, I'm overlapping a bit, but I don't really care too much. I think by default, it'll give a name to ones that you don't do. Or maybe it won't. I don't actually know. Don't quote me on that. Okay, good enough for right now. And with that, again, you can do small or large brushes. You can do little pockets of different continents. Or you can do, like I did, massive swaths of continents. Next is rivers. Rivers, you have to start at a coast and then bring them inwards, or start at a body of water like this here and bring them inward. You have to click on the edges of the hexes. You can branch them, spread them out. When I last played, there was a glitch where if you had a full circle like this, I got very mad at you. I don't know if that's fixed. I'm not going to jinx it. I don't mess with rivers, people. I don't mess with them. 
Okay, so you can see you can place rivers there. Again, I'm not going to worry too much, so I'm just going to kind of go around like this and add some rivers in that aren't very good. They're a little bit finicky. You have to like really like click the edges to make them work proper. So sometimes they can be a little bit annoying, but they end up working just fine. Okay, that's enough for rivers. Cliffs. Cliffs are the same sort of thing. You just sort of paint them around where you want. By default, when you make a hill terrain that has a coastline, it is going to add a cliff. Uh, you can go in and manually remove these in the same way that you would add them to other places, just by uh, right-clicking. So as you can see, I'm going over here, I'm right-clicking these because I'm going to remove some of these cliffs. Cliffs are a very important thing. Uh, there's something that maybe isn't taken into account very often when making a map, but they really do determine a lot of the sea combat availability and, like, can people go from here to there? If there's all cliffs, they can't really as well. Then we finally get to resources. Resources are not sorted in any way. You can also determine the resource amount. That is because based on the uh, Gathering Storm update, or maybe it was a later update, but they made it so each resource is a certain amount essentially and you kind of like stockpile them and you spend them kind of like a currency versus uh you have it it's there type of a thing or maybe i have that reversed again i apologize if i do it has been quite a long time since i've played what i like to do though is i'm just going to scatter resources it'll take a moment so just be patient it's thinking there we go so now it has scattered resources certain resources obviously cannot be placed on certain things so for example this copper Yes, can be placed on a mountain. This fish, yes, can be placed on a lake or a coast tile. But they cannot be placed opposite, right? You can't put fish on a mountain. You can't put copper in the ocean. It's not going to happen. So I like to do scatter because it usually gives a pretty good spread. Make sure there's a good amount of each resource. Um, and that includes late game resources like uranium or like coal or not coal, but uh, like iron and things, nitrite. Like it, like it makes sure there's a good amount. I like to do that personally. If I know I'm making a map where I want to be like, oh, well, this area is known for having wine, so I'll put wine there. Or this is like a really mountainous area, so I want just a ton of sheep. You can do that. You can go in and you can add that. So I can go in and I can add horses. Let's say I want this to be horse land. Well, it's horse land now because there's just a lot of horses. And again, each resource has certain things it can and can't be placed on. You can't put horses in a rainforest. It's just not going to happen. Then we get to tribal villages. These are just the... Uh, the goody huts, as I've heard them called before. So you can just put these wherever you want. Um, ideally, when I'm making a map, I like to put them in kind of hard-to-reach places, spread out pretty evenly around the map, just to make sure that you know one starting location doesn't get more or less. But I like to put them especially on small islands or other little locations where I know people probably won't go there until late in the game, and they're kind of like a cool little, little find. But you don't want to do that too much, because usually once you get to the late game, they're not that valuable. Depending. Okay. Now, this is a map. You could potentially play on this, but we're going to do a little bit more here. We're going to go into the advanced mode. It will warn you, uh, this is still in development and is unsupported, technically speaking, but you are fine to go into here. I, I do it every single time I make a map. It just depends on what you put in. Okay. So in the advanced mode, this is where you can start messing with things and making things almost like scenarios. You can determine start locations, you can make cities, you can make districts and buildings and routes within those cities or between those cities. You can set the owner to those cities. There's a lot you can do. Personally speaking, I don't mess with this, okay, because that's how you make scenarios and that's not really what I'm here interested in. I did get a lot of questions on my previous videos about start locations, so I will show how to do a start location. Before I can do that though, I need to set the players. So up here in the top left corner, you will see player editor. I'm going to click on that, and then you will see over here on the left, we have a list of the players. You can click on them and you can see they're human and like what uh, civilization, what leader, blah blah blah. We're going to be setting these back to default. If you choose random, that means human player must always be random, so be aware of that. You actually want any, so that way you can actually choose who you're playing. And we're going to do the same to the AI. Again, if you choose random, they will always be random. And I know sometimes I like to play against certain leaders to, so like, do real-life scenarios or, like, you know, just make it kind of fun, like, oh, we're all coastal civs or we're all ocean-related civs, so it'll be kind of fun to do, like, an ocean battle. Anyway... 
Uh, if you want to add more real players, you do that down here in the bottom left corner, add player. You simply make sure you set them to civilization and set them to any, and then they're good to go. You can also remove them just as easily. So let's say I wanted to add one more AI player. I'll add new AI player. I'll make them any and civilization. Boom. Now I am playing on a dual map here, which means it's, it's a bit smaller. So I am going to actually keep it to just me, the human player, and the AI player. Note, if you want to have more human players, you, you will need to add more human players. Okay. Anyway, with this extra AI spot, AI player three, I'm going to change over here to city states because we need to add in city states. They should be set to random by default. You can specifically select them uh, and they should work just fine. But if you set them to any, they will not show up. You do need to select random. So I'm going to do two city states, two players. That sounds great to me. I'm going to close that out. Again, you can go in depth here. You could edit which player has which civiliz or civics, which texts, like you, which cities. Like you can go really in depth. We're not going to do any of that right now because we're just trying to make a basic map to play. That's all I need this for. I can close that. It's gone now. Okay. That's all I needed. Oh. I did forget I was going to do start positions. Okay, so let's say I want to determine start locations, right? I want to start in the tundra because maybe I'm planning on playing like Russia or something. So I will over here select player one. Okay, so now that I've got this ray, I've got player one selected. There was a little bit of a hiccup there. It placed a mountain for some reason. I select start positions and I'm going to place a start position. And you can see it made a city. Now if I click somewhere else, it's going to move that one because this is player one's start location. Obviously, you can only have one. I'll go to player two. I will put them on the opposite end of the planet. So I'll put them over here in this lush jungle area. So that'll be great. They'll have a nice mixture of things. Very nice for them. Give me a bit of a handicap. Player three, I know, is a city state. So I'll do a city state over here. And then I'll do another city state uh, over here. So again, you can see them right there. Awesome, so I've done start locations, I'll close it out. If you don't do start locations, it will just go based on whatever setting you had chosen previously, which is fine. Okay, we are now in the final part of this process. We click this feather pen looking icon, which is the map editor. This is where you edit some of the metadata. This tab, we don't need. We go to text. The two you absolutely need are mod name and map name. I recommend you make them identical, so that way no matter what, you will not lose them. So I will name this one uh, September, because it's not actually September, oh, that's not how you spell September. It's not actually September, but that's when this update came out, so that's what I'm going to do. September. And again, I am making sure to make these both identical. If you want, you can make a description for the mod and a description for the map. Uh, the mod description will show up in the mods menu. The map description will show up in the map menu. That's what these are indicating. So you could, you know, change it up. You can also add and remove more text box. I don't know what that will do, so I'm just not going to worry about it. <laughs> okay. We click escape and we click save map. And I'm going to, again, name it the same thing. September. Okay. So you must, you, I, I don't know if you must, but I'm going to highly recommend you make sure it's named the same in each thing. Now this is a saved map. I could come back to this later, make changes, and then save it again, and it'll be fine. But for now, we're going to be going back to the main menu. Okay, now to load this map, all you need to do is go start up a single player game. Uh, create game. Make sure the rule set is correct. Again, mine are all currently disabled, but if you have yours enabled, you'll need to make sure you select the correct rule set. Then you are going to go down to map type. Scroll down, and look, there's September. You'll know it's a world builder created map because it'll have this sort of weird player looking people icon. So September, and there's the description right there, an untitled map made by world builder, because I did not edit anything else there. Again, you can filter by clicking World Builder Maps, and that will show just World Builder Maps. So I'll select that, 
Uh, it automatically makes it dual map size because that is what I created on. Speed doesn't matter. If I go to advanced setup, uh, you can see it already has the two players ready to go. City states, I'm going to lower down to two. Um, if you put more, I believe it will randomly just spawn them, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just going to leave that at two because that's what I planned on doing. Everything else is how I like it. Barbarians will automatically be placed. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, like, individually placing barbarian spawn areas or something like that. And I'm just going to let myself be a random leader. Uh, just to show... Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to start game. As we're loading in here, I'm actually going to be doing the a quick uh, Q&A section. So before we actually load in, this is a quick Q&A. If you want, you can skip ahead in the video to uh, see the final bits of the map here. So, first things. First question is, how do I do start locations? Like I showed, you go into the advanced options, you set up players first, and then you just add in the start locations. And that's it. You just place one for each person, and that is it. Is World Builder on console? No. Unfortunately, the World Builder is not on the console. I, it's too bad, but it is not. How to name a map? This was a question I got once or twice. As you saw before, I went to the feather pin icon, and I just simply named the map. Uh, make sure you have the name of the mod, the name of the map, and the name of the save all identical. That will make it a lot easier for you to track it down if you need to look for it in your files. How to enable your maps on multiplayer. They should already be enabled. Again, it just you just need to make sure that you don't have any mods or any DLC enabled unless the people you're playing with have the exact same ones. If they're missing even one, they won't be able to play. Uh, how to share maps. I'll be going over that at the very end of the video, just because then you can like see where to find it in files. But briefly, you can see up here on the screen, uh, I have the path that you need to go to to find the map files. If you just share one of those with one of your friends, pop into Discord, put it in Dropbox, and share a link, they'll be able to download it, put it right where you found it, and they will be able to play your map. I just tested this with a friend only moments ago. Is advanced mode necessary? No, technically speaking not. You can play the game without going into the advanced mode of the editor, but again, if you want to be able to put star locations or edit the player value, the players and things, you might need to. So if for some reason you don't and it doesn't work, you will need to go into advanced mode, yes. Natural wonders cannot be scattered. I had this question once or twice. You cannot scatter them. I think there's maybe one or two that still aren't properly working, but again, I have not tested every single one because there's a lot of them. You Do you I need to edit XML files and mod info files or do any sort of file editing? No. You do not need to do any file editing. Uh, it, with the September update, they made the world builder public. And as you saw when I entered the menu, it was just right there, easy to use. Do you need Gathering Storm? No. You do not need Gathering Storm. The world builder is included. With Civilization VI, it is full, as long as your game is fully updated, you can play it. You can use the world builder and and do it. You will be missing some options. As you saw, I did not have any options to place volcanoes. There were a bunch of natural wonders I could not place, and teams I couldn't choose from, and a couple different special terrains I couldn't use. But, I mean, you saw the rest of it. You can do it just fine. Can you play a Gathering Storm map without Gathering Storm? No. You cannot play a Gathering Storm made map without Gathering Storm. So if I make a map with cool volcanoes and I have it set to Gathering Storm and I share it with my friend, if they don't have Gathering Storm, they cannot play it. Reverse of that, can you play a non-Gathering Storm map with the Gathering Storm settings on? Yes, you should be able to play. So if I took this map that I made with standard rules, I should be able to take this map and go turn on Gathering Storm and play it with those rules. Of course, it will not have any volcanoes because I did not place any volcanoes. So keep that in mind. Generally speaking, whatever settings you make the map on, that is the settings you should play with, including any mods, any settings, any rule sets, any of that. Anyway, that ends the Q&A section. Let's get into the map here. Now, whenever I make a map, I like to go test to make sure it actually worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the little Atilde key, I believe is what it's called, and that will bring up the um, debug panel up here, sort of the console command type stuff. If you do not have this enabled, there are great tutorials out there on, and I'll maybe try to link one below on how to make sure this is enabled. That is something you have to go into your settings for. 
uh, that will just simply type reveal all. And I'll click enter. It's going to go through and show me all the different things I've discovered. So that might take a bit if you have a lot of stuff. But if I zoom out, I can see my beautiful map in all of its glory. And as you can see, there they are. Now, I do see it did spawn us in slightly different locations. It spawned me here. Oh, no. I forgot they were... Uh, I forgot that they were player one and I was player two. Okay, that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it has spawned us in to the different locations. Um, and it has the city states, not quite exactly where I placed them, but again, these starting locations aren't always the best. I may have had a setting wrong here or there. But Horseland is looking as beautiful as it always has. Anyway, that is it. My final thing is I'm going to briefly jump over into my files to again show you where those maps can be found. Okay, so this part might be a little bit hard to see. I didn't feel like taking the time to zoom in because, again, it's just a quick little thing. You go to Documents, My Games. I didn't bother showing that because I've got all the personal files there, of course. I click Sid Meier's Civ 6. I go to Saves, and I go to World Builder, and there are all of my maps. Uh, and you can see I've got a couple different ones I've made in here. And this is where you can find them. Uh, and then if you want to share them, all you need to do is share one of these files. Like, let's say... Uh, September, right here, all I need to do is take September, I need to just drop into Discord or put it on Dropbox, and my friends will be able to download it. They just need to put it in the same place, which is, again is Documents, My Games, Civilization 6, Saves, World Builder, and they just drop it right in, and then it should be good to go. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Fucking hell. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have a great rest of your day. See you later.